Are you looking for a travel trailer with bunk beds so everybody has a place to sleep at night? Well, stick around, folks. We found three awesome floor plans. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get into our reviews of small travel trailers with bunk beds. This travel trailer is the Keystone Passport model number 221BH. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 5,219 pounds, cargo carry capacity of 1,781 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 7,000 pounds. It measures in at 26 feet, four inches long, and it can sleep up to eight people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll notice your sofa and your Murphy bed. Then it wraps on around to the dinette area, kitchen area. Finally, we have our bunk beds back here and also the bathroom. So here I am at the entry door and Susan is now standing where I was standing. And uh, I gotta say the couch in here feels pretty darn comfy. Now, if you'll notice up above the kitchen, that's where the TV is located and that TV will pop out and swing around so it faces you right here on the sofa. So that's a great layout that works really well. Also, since this is where your Murphy bed is, you can lay in bed and watch TV that way too. Now, there's a window on each side here so you can get a little bit of cross breeze coming through, but uh, this is a really comfy couch that I'm sure anyone would enjoy. Now, to turn this into a Murphy bed, you just jackknife this out I've already popped the D-ring on the other side and there's a D-ring on this side and everything just folds right on out. Now this does have a fold in the center of the mattress, something to be aware of uh, when you get a Murphy bed, but um, they're much better than they used to be as far as Murphy bed mattresses go. Now you'll notice on each side of the bed, you have a very large wardrobe closet with a shelf up top, a hanging bar down below that. And then you've got a really nice big nightstand here, which is underneath of the wardrobe closet. And there's also receptacles on either side of the bed. So if you have a CPAP or you want to uh, charge your phone, tablet, uh, Kindle, whatever, you can certainly do that while you're in bed at night. A couple of other nice features to note are that there are three drawers underneath of the sofa, so you have plenty of storage there, and there's also a drawer in the one nightstand. I missed one little detail, one thing to add, and that is the bed size, which is 60 by 80 residential queen bed. So here I am on the door side of the kitchen, and I just want to point out there are three nice size drawers on this side of the kitchen island. You can use these for all of your kitchen utensils, or you can also put clothes in them since this is kind of your bedroom over here. And then it even has a cabinet under the kitchen sink you can open from both sides. So here I am in the dinette area, and I would say uh, two people can definitely sit here very, very comfortably. Maybe three would be the most, possibly four. But this will be a great setup for me and Susan to play cards. We like to sit across from each other, play cards at night, have a really good time. Last night I beat her, I think, six games to two or something like that. It was off the chain. Anyway, uh, very nice dinette setup. Got a nice big window here that opens so you can get some fresh air in. Another window on that side of the dinette. And then the dinette itself, the table will drop down and this will convert into a bed. And if you choose to do that, you will have about 76 inches by about 38 inches. So a decent size for someone to be able to sleep here, that's for sure. And then down below the dinette booth, there are drawers on both sides that pull out and open up. So you have additional storage space under there as well. So this is what we would call an L-shaped kitchen, by the way. So it's big L shape, as you can see. It's got a very nice size single bowl sink in here. It's wide and deep, 
and you can wash your dishes in there with no problem. It's also an undermount sink, which I think is really fantastic. And then of course the gooseneck faucet has a sprayer that'll pull out. So it makes it even easier to wash your dishes. There's also plenty of countertop space as we wrap on around. Finally, there's a bank of drawers here that you can use to store even more kitchen utensils. Another uh, cabinet down below that. And then we have a three burner cooktop with a real oven down below. So if you like to do some baking, this is a great camper for you. And then finally down below that, we have a nice big drawer for pots and pans. And if all that's not enough countertop space for you, there's even a countertop extension that you can pop up at the end of the L-shaped. Now above the kitchen countertops, this is where the TV is located that I mentioned earlier in the video, but this is also a great spot to watch TV while you're sitting at, dinette, at your dinette and having dinner. And then of course next to that you have a nice microwave oven. Now as we keep on moving down, we have a nice big refrigerator in here. This is a 12 volt refrigerator, so it's nice and big and roomy. It runs on a compressor so it will get colder much, much faster. Now, if you're looking for storage inside a travel trailer, this might just be the travel trailer for you. They have built in this gigantic storage area. And in here, you have your choice between a wardrobe style cabinet with a bar up top, or it's got a removable shelf here. You could leave the shelf in and just make it all big pantry storage in here. And to give you an idea how big it is, it's 32 inches deep and 36 inches wide. So that's just a ton of storage space. And if that's not enough, there's even more down below. So this is a fixed shelf down here. You can't remove it, but you have plenty of space in there for lots of storage. So just past the kitchen, we have the bunk beds and these bunks are really pretty big in size. Let's see how big they are. This one is 74 inches and it's about 50 inches wide. So these bunks are really, really good size. I would say two kids could sleep on each bunk if you wanted them to. They do have a maximum weight of 300 pounds for each bunk. So definitely two kids. I don't think Susan and I could sleep up here because man, she would blow right past that weight limit. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to, she's going to kill me later. She weighs like 100 pounds soaking wet. Uh, anyway, there's also three other things or four other things that we look for in bunk beds that just make a lot of sense. One is a window, one is receptacles, one is USB ports, and the fourth is a light. And both of these bunks check off all four boxes. They both have their own window, light, USB ports, and receptacles, which is fantastic because kids can be up here, see what they're doing, recharge electronics, whatever they need to do and get a little natural light in the daytime as well. And one more cool feature about the bottom bunk is the bottom bunk even folds up and out of the way. And then you have this nice rear access door where you can store bikes, chairs, all kinds of taller things. This is fantastic storage in a travel trailer. So here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower as usual. And you guys know that I'm 5'11". Oh, there's about four inches over my head. So let's see what we got. I'm pretty sure it's gonna measure right up to, whoops, six feet, three inches tall. So there you go. If you're taller than that, you'll have to crouch down a bit in here. Now the shower in here is actually pretty nice. It has a very nice surround. It's got three shelves in the corner so you can put your soap, uh, shampoo, maybe a razor, whatever you need back here. The wand pulls out so you can shower very, very easily. And finally, it has a retractable shower door, which is very convenient and it'll keep a shower curtain from blowing in on you. So this is a great feature to have as well. There's also a small window in the bathroom. We don't really see that very often, but there you go. If you want some natural light in here, you can get that for sure. And then finally, we have a mirrored medicine cabinet with a few shelves in there for plenty of storage. Down below that, we have a corner vanity with a sink and extra storage down below. Here I am on the commode and I think this bathroom is gonna pass the elbow test with flying colors. There's even pass-through storage underneath the bed in the front of this travel trailer. This travel trailer is the Grand Design Imagine AIM model number 15BH and the AIM stands for Adventure in Motion. It's got an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,560 pounds, 
a cargo carry capacity of 1,235 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of just 4,795 pounds. It measures in at 19 feet 11 inches long and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, in the very back of the camper is where the bathroom and the bunk beds are located. Then as you wrap around, you have your dinette area and a very nice big kitchen. When you first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing you notice on the right hand side, it has six really nice hooks here that you can use to hang all of your coats and things like that up. To the left of me here is where the bathroom is located. You also have your controls on the wall, very, very convenient location for that. We'll cover the bathroom last. And then finally, you have this totally cool bunk bed setup. I've never seen anything like this before. And here's what I really like about it. There's actually a couple things. First of all, this is where the parents are gonna sleep on this lower queen size bed that's in here. And this looks to be a pretty large bed. It's actually 80 inches long and it is 60 inches wide. So it is a full residential size queen bed that's in this camper. Very, very nicely done. You'll notice on the left hand side here, there's a couple of pockets with mesh on them. You can put your tablets, your Kindles, recharge things in there. Up top here is, if you have a little one with you, this is where a third person would be able to sleep. Now we already know it's 80 inches long because it's the same length as the queen bed below it and it's 40 inches wide. So perfect size for a third person to be able to camp along with you. You'll also notice in here that up top there's a light and a USB and C port. Uh, and down below, you've got all the same things. You've got a light, a USB and a C, and even a window. Now, one other feature about this bed that is tremendous, we have the same thing in our Class C RV, and that is under the queen size bed, the entire area is storage. So there's tons of storage in this travel trailer. You can access it from two ways. One is to open this door so you can access things from inside the trailer. The other way to access it, access it is by going outside. There's a very large wide door that you can open from the outside to access under here as well. Currently the door is locked, so I can't show it to you from outside. One last really neat feature about this, set, this bed setup is if you don't have a third person staying with you, you can just raise the bed right on up, clip it into space, and it's out of your way. So here I am at the dinette, and I would say two people could very comfortably sit here. You could squeeze three in if one was a child, no problem. Nice big window over top of the dinette table. I'm a little surprised they didn't put some cabinets up here to get some extra storage space, but there's a lot of storage you'll see as we wrap around through the kitchen. Now the dinette table also does drop down, and this be can become another bed as well. And so if we measure this up, it comes in at right about six feet and this is about 40 inches wide. Now the first thing I notice about the kitchen area in here is just the huge amount of countertop space. I mean plenty of countertop space there, plenty of countertop space on the other side, but starting from behind the dinette you've got some open storage overhead then you have these airplane style doors that lift up with even more storage overhead. You'll notice down below, again, we've got this giant corner area that's just huge. You could do, you could put tons of stuff up here. And then they have a very large single bowl sink here with a gooseneck and an integral sprayer as well. As we wrap on around the kitchen area here, you've got another large corner countertop area. There's a nice two burner stove here with a convection microwave oven down below. Next to that, we have our refrigerator which is a smaller size refrigerator, but a decent size. And then it's got a freezer on the very bottom with a pull out drawer. So one other really nice feature about this kitchen is the amount of storage that you have. We already looked at the storage cabinets overhead. Down below on this side, there are two very large drawers with, that are fully extendable by the way. So you have tons of storage there. Then as you look at your kitchen, you've got two big cabinet doors on either side of the sink plus more storage underneath of the sink. And then finally, under your convection microwave oven, there's a pots and pans drawer down below. Now, over top of the refrigerator is where the TV is located. This is probably the best spot where they could put the TV in here. It's on a swing arm, so you can pull it out, 
and actually, you know, sort of swirl it around so you can see it from the bunks. It's not exactly the best angle, but it's good enough. And then you'll notice behind the TV, there's this very large hidden storage area too. Underneath of the TV, you have this black glass door. When you open that up, you've got lots of storage underneath and then all your radio controls are here as well. So here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower as I usually am. And let's see how much headroom we have in here. It feels pretty good. I'm 5'11 and we have about six feet, six inches of headroom in here. So that's a very, very good amount of headroom when you're taking a shower. You have these three corner shelves in here. You can put your soap and shampoo and all that good stuff. Removable wand. And then last but not least, it's got a retractable shower door so you don't have a curtain blowing in on you. Now, you might be wondering where the bathroom sink is and Grand Design did a really fantastic job with this. They actually built it into the wall. You see these in some of the new camp teardrops and things like that, but you can pull the sink out, swivel your faucet around, Plenty of room in here to wash your hands. It even has some storage up top for soap and things along those lines. Fold the sink back up when you're done. And then you've got your commode here where when you're sitting on your commode, even with the door closed, plenty of room for the elbow test. One last really nice feature about this model is that it does have an outside griddle. You can slide it right out. It's got a quick connect propane line right down below. You can cook up all your meals. Introducing today's sponsor, RV Snap Pad. RV Snap Pad is the world's only permanent jack pad. It's made for fifth wheels, motorhomes, travel trailers, truck campers, and much more. Snap pads were made to snap onto your levelers or stabilizer system and stay there for good. The reasons we installed snap pads on our RV are we have permanent jack pads installed at all times, we have increased stability for each landing foot, our jack feet are protected from bending or damage. We have reduced slipping or sinking on soft surfaces, and we're even protected from indirect lightning strikes. We're partnered with SnapPad to offer our viewers a special discount on a set of SnapPads. Just click the link in the description below or go to rvsnappad.com, enter your RV info, and get an instant recommendation for the right size SnapPads for your rig. Then use our discount code RVBlogger10 during checkout to get 10% off. Snap pads are made in South Carolina, California, and Indiana from recycled tire crumb. In addition to being made in the USA, Snap Pads offers additional discounts for veterans or first responders. Visit rvsnappad.com today for more info. This travel trailer is the Heartland Prowler model number 172BHX. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,820 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,190 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,010 pounds. It measures in at 26 feet 6 inches long and it can sleep up to 7 people. When you first walk into this camper on the right hand side, you'll find your sofa and Murphy bed. Then as we wrap around, you enter into the kitchen and dinette area. Finally, towards the back of the camper is where you'll find your bunk beds and your bathroom. So when you first walk into this camper, the first thing I noticed is that the door height in here is a little short. Some campers are built with shorter doors. Now, as you guys know, I'm 5'11", so I almost smacked my head, my hair hit it, not my head, thankfully, but it's only five feet, nine inches tall. So for you taller folks, you're gonna have to duck a little every time you walk in here so you don't smack your head. Now on my right hand side is where the sofa and the Murphy bed are located. And actually, you know, this is actually a pretty comfortable sofa. Um, you know, three people could easily sit here and be quite comfortable. Now behind me is where the Murphy bed's located. And so to open that, you just jackknife out the sofa. You just pull the D-ring and the bed flat platform drops down and then the mattress folds down on top of it. Now there's one light over overhead for a little reading light and there is a receptacle at the one end of the mattress up there. Right next to me here, you've also got a wardrobe closet with a couple of receptacles here, which would be right next to what might be a nightstand for you. Let's see the size of this bed. And it is measuring in at 74 inches long by 60 inches wide. So this will be considered a short queen bed. 
So the kitchen area is what we would consider an inline kitchen. All of the appliances are right in one line. Starting up top, you have a microwave oven. And then next to that, you've got a nice big cabinet storage space up here. Down below, this is really unusual, but it comes with a double bowl stainless steel sink. I personally prefer a large single bowl sink. I think it's easier to do dishes, especially larger pots and pans, but you may have a different opinion. You might like the double bowl. Let us know in the comments below which one, of, which kind of sink you prefer and why. Also, it's got a large gooseneck faucet overhead. And then next to that, you have a two burner stove, which is turned sideways, and that helps to create a little more countertop space in here. Now, speaking of the countertop, this is a great looking countertop. I've not seen one in this wood pattern before, but I think it looks really sharp, gives it a little more interest. Um, it just looks really good. Down below that, we have a kitchen utensil door, drawer, and then below that, storage below your kitchen sink. Just beyond the kitchen sink is where the fridge is located. It's a very good size fridge for a smaller camper like this. And then it does have a separate freezer up top. The dinette is located directly across from the kitchen and this could easily seat four people. We're showing the table in the drop down position so that this can also become another bed in here. And this bed would measure uh, about 60 inches by 40 inches wide. So I would say a child would be able to sleep on, on here very, very comfortably. One thing I will note about the dinette location is that it is on the camp side of the trailer, meaning that when you're looking out the window, and we have a bad glare, so we have the shade down, but when you're looking out the window, you can see your campsite, you know, your fire ring, your picnic table, and the people that are out there hanging out. So it's a great location because it's on the right side of the camper. Over top of the kitchen dinette, you've also got these really nice large storage cabinets here, so you have tons of storage. Now, just beyond that is where the bunk beds are located back here. Now, these bunks are pretty good size. Um, gosh, this one is 70 inches by about 50 inches. So. I mean, you could probably get two small kids up top and another two small kids down the bottom. I will say this though, there's only a 200 pound weight rating on these, which is one of the lower weight ratings I've ever seen on a bunk bed. So I couldn't sleep up here, I'll tell you that. Susan could, but I couldn't. Um, and so that's a bit of a concern. I'll also note that there are no electrical receptacles or USBs up here. so. Your kids really won't be able to plug in up here and recharge overnight or play games while they're falling asleep. So that could be something to look out for if you're in the market for a new camper. Down below the bottom bunk, there is a light under here, but again, no USBs or receptacles. Or and window. then, what? Or window. And there's no window either, Susan noted, which is a great point. And then down below that, there is a lot of storage that runs underneath a whole half of this lower bunk. So here I am standing in the bathtub inside the bathroom like I usually am. And I am 5'11 and my head is just hitting the ceiling in here. So there's about 5 feet 11 inches of head space in here. Uh, it does have a nice uh, shower surround in here. It's got three little corner shelves in here so you can put your soap and shampoo. It's got a detachable wand and all that stuff. Now this one does have a shower curtain which if you've seen my videos before, I don't really like shower curtains, but in this circumstance, it's okay because the shower curtain's on a track that sort of bows out into the bathroom. But the other reason it's necessary is because this is a bathtub setup. So if you have little ones and they need to take a bath, here you go. Um, it's about a 16 inch tall tub and um, you can't really have a shower door or things like that on here because I think they would be in the way of you getting in and out of the tub. Your only real option besides a curtain would be a retractable shower door, which is really what I'd like to see in this kind of setup. Now Susan's located in the shower and I'm standing across the bathroom from her. You'll notice that you've got a mirror up top here, no medicine cabinet, and I guess you could always add one later. But one cool feature is this little panel here. This is where you could turn on your water pump and water heater, and it also displays your tank capacity. So having this in the bathroom is a great idea. Just below that, you have a corner vanity with some storage underneath. Finally, here I am sitting on the commode, and as far as the elbow test goes, even with the door closed, it passes with flying colors. 
Now that you've had a chance to check out all three of these travel trailers, let us know in the comments down below which is your favorite and why. And if you'd like to check out some more travel trailers with bunk beds, just click the box down below. And Susan and I will see you in the next video.